it's me again. I'm here on an elk farm. I'm doing my next Ben's Wild Adventure episode about elk again, so basically elk too. I just interviewed the owner, Jim, and he said he's got like 22 elk here and only one is a mature adult male. Unfortunately, we can't really see them right now because they're hot and they're in the shade. They won't let us come too close, so we may have to come back another time when it's cooler and when they're out grazing in the field. But other than that, it's been going pretty well so far. As I said earlier, um, how many elk do you have here? I think we have about 22, but we're having lots of calves, so I'm not sure exactly. Oh. Um, so I take it, is that that male elk, is he the only one here, the only male? He is the only mature male. So he's, I take it he's the biggest one here? He's the biggest one here. But who's the oldest? The oldest is one of the cows. Yeah? And she's uh, 21. And the youngest one? Well, we have calves that were born a couple of weeks ago. And those must be the smallest ones. They are little tiny calves. Um, do any of them have names? Like, does the male have, name, have a name? No, no, because they're livestock, um, we don't give them names. Oh, so um, how are we going to get there? Well, they won't let you get very close. Obviously, they're wild animals, well, and they're, they're, are shy. They are shy, and they'll, they figure that you're some kind of a predator, and so they'll run from you. Yes. People have been gored by elk before. Yeah. Where did these elk come from? Well, these elk have all been born behind wire. These are not from the wild. Oh. So I got my elk, oh, 18 years ago. So you've had them for 18 years? We've done this for 18 years. Wow. And um, were any of them like exotic pets? No. Oh. They were all livestock. I got six pregnant cows and a bull from a fellow in Cornish, New Hampshire, who used to have an elk farm. Oh, cool. Uh, but these are many, many generations behind wire. The male, he has his antlers, right? He grows new antlers every year. All right. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Yeah, I know, in the wild, they tend to live in harems, <coughs> led by the male. During the breeding season, that's true. Other than the breeding season, the cows run the herd. Ah, the bulls are just sort of off by themselves. And I know that these are the second largest deer in the world. The only one larger is the moose. That's correct. And they're very big. Yes. I've, now this may sound strange, this may sound a little funny, but I've actually heard the biggest one in history was 10 feet long, 6 feet tall, weighed a ton. And its antlers were 6 feet wide, weighed 50 pounds each, and the antlers alone were 5 feet long. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, and the fastest one ever ran like 50 miles an hour. And in both moose and elk, the clash force is 80% of their body weight. So the heaviest elk ever weighing one ton, that's 1,600 pounds per square inch. That's like getting hit by three football players. And for the heaviest moose ever weighing two tons, that's 1.6 tons per square inch. That's like getting pinned underneath like two sumo wrestlers, I think. I don't think I'd want to have either happen. Hmm. How'd you get into this? Well, my profession was geology. And cool. I became a geologist because I didn't want to grow up and stop playing in the dirt. Oh, cool. And I was very good at geology, and so they made me a manager, and so I was never playing in the dirt anymore. Oh, cool. So I wanted to find something that could make money and that would allow me to play in the dirt. So this is what it is. Oh, cool. Um, that Clash Force thing I told you about being 80% of their body weight. I learned that from Chris and Martin Kratt from Be the Creature. Very good. And, um, other thing, um, yeah, like I said, people have been gored by elk before. Elk are the sword fighters of headbangers because their antlers are as sharp as swords. They are very sharp. I have some antlers in the store if you want to take a look at some yeah, shed, sure. sheds that came off of some of our bigger bulls. He was a very, very large animal. So this is the one that you were telling me about. He was a, he was one mean bull. Was he the one that weighed a thousand pounds? Yeah. Oh. And he was nasty. Boy, I wonder what the animals from a one-ton elk would look like. Bigger than that. Oh, big that is. 
Yep. Yeah. So, this one has eight tines. Yep. He was an eight by eight that year. Oh, I was just kidding. Yeah, their 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 antlers are part of their skulls. Here's the antler, and it's been cut. You can see the marrow that all the blood flowed up and down. Oh, see. oh wow. Yeah, you can hold it. Oh, now it's goring me in my head. <laughs> And you know how their eyes are on the side of their heads? Mm -hmm. When they're fighting each other, they can look at each other when they're fighting, because we can't do that, because our eyes are on the front of our heads. They can even look behind them while they're fighting. You know, what do you feed them? Well, right now, all they're eating is grass that grows in the pasture. Yeah. And as you can see, I mow areas to encourage the grass growth. And there's places where it's not mowed that they're eating now. And there's places that I mowed that it's coming back and nice and green. So they'll eat grass yeah. all summer long, and then in the winter, we hay the back 20 acres, and we make great big round bales, and those are wrapped over there, and that's what they eat. So all they get is grass. Oh, pretty cool. Um, you said the male was the biggest one here. How big is he? He's about 800, 800 pounds. 800 pounds. Yeah, he's not all that big. Oh. We've had animals that were much bigger than we. Oh, we had a couple that were Close, probably close to a thousand pounds. And like I said, the largest one ever was one ton yeah, in that's, history. That's uh, a lot larger than I want to have on my farm. <laughs> yeah. And um, I've even seen on TV sometimes elk fighting bison. Really? Yes. I saw this am on Animal Fight Night, an elk was going head to head with a bison. Huh. I've seen elk in the wild out west. I've been on two trips out west and I've seen them in the wild. Hmm. That's good. Well, their big enemy are wolves. Yeah, I know that, obviously. And that's, they don't like anything that's dog-like. So they don't like people's pets, and they don't like coyote, and they don't like fox, and they, we don't have any wolves around here, but we do have coyote. We got a few. Can you imagine what it would be like if their ancestors, the Irish elks, were still alive and they lived here? They would be much bigger than largest deer that ever lived. Yes. With the biggest antlers of any deer that ever lived. Remarkable. So some people um, have herds of hybrids where they'll, they will have, um, they'll use elk cows and a red deer sire. Oh cool. And then they get animals that are, have characteristics of both. Red deer aren't as expensive or as hard to raise as elk. Yeah. So you get more, more for your buck. You can also crossbreed white-tailed deer with mule deer. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're, they're closely related. Yeah. I've seen it. The hybrid, the way it runs is kind of in between the way a white-tailed deer runs and the way a mule deer runs. Thanks for watching my interview with the owner of the elk farm. See you next time on another regular episode of Ben's Wild Adventure.